hello there how are you doing so in this very short video we are going to be looking at making a very basic responsive navigation menu in html css and javascript so this is what we have on a large screen and when we come down to a smaller device we get this menu up button here that we can click and then the menu slides in and out all right so this is what we are going to be making let's get to it I have an empty folder opened in VS Code. You can use any code editor you want to use. I'll go ahead and create an index.html file there. I also need a CSS file, so I'll do a main.css and an app.js for my JavaScript code. Do you know what? Um, yeah, let's have that for our JavaScript code. So in the HTML, what I want to do now is um, generate the basic html template and i think i want to call this um is this sound file i just made up this name if you exist out there please it's total coincidence okay so let's say this is the welcome page the welcome page of course so what we want to do next now is let's go ahead and lay out the header of the of the side of the page okay so for this header i'm going to use an h2 for the logo the logo is just going to be plain text for now so send the file and let's give it an id of logo and then i want to have the navigation menus the nav menus okay let's use an unordered list there that is our ul tag and then inside wants to have an li with a child of anchor tag and let's say this is the home menu let's see what we have in those menus so we have home trending and top 10 so let's repeat this twice next will be trending and then this will be top 10 so let's save that now that we are done with that the next thing we want to do is let's make that menu button for that button for this case i'll be using a div with an id of menu button and then just menu here you can go ahead and use any icon if you have an icon maybe the three bar icon you could even use font awesome for that but for this video we'll use just this plain text of menu so let's save that and that is all for the header that is all for the header so what we want to do now is um we want to go to our css and of course we have to link our css file so let's do a link tag here and then say main.css let's save that and let's see what we have so far so let's do let me open this up in the browser all right so this is what we have so far and this is our sample so so far this is what we have let's start let's give this a little bit of styling so let's come to the main.css so yeah the first thing we want to do first is take away all these default um margin and padding we usually have in our page whenever you create a new file so we'll use the universal selector set the margin to zero and also the padding to zero also i want to set my box sizing to border box and um let's let me change this font so i'll be using a font family of um let me go with poppins okay now i have this installed on my pc and that's why i don't have to connect online for this if you don't have these fonts on your system you might want to use the google fonts link okay so a fallback of sans serif and by default let me give a font size of 17 px all right let's save that you know what i want to go ahead and divide my screen into two so we can um, have a preview of what we're making so yeah let's have it that way okay now that we are done with that the next thing we want to go do now is style the header so let me call the header tag don't forget we have a header tag so this is where i'm styling now all right so for header let's set the background color i'll use black because that's what we have currently so let's give a black and um, let's set the color to the font color to white okay 
and then let's give it a display of flex this will make each of the item show side by side and give it a justify content of space between align items center okay let's also give it a little bit of padding so let's do 20 px um let me go three percent yeah that should give us that and then um let's give a border bottom okay a border bottom of um let's do one px solid um let's do a light gray there light gray because i'm trying to notice this border right here that's what i'm trying to put okay so that is for the header next we want to style all the a tag okay first of all take away the test decoration set that equal to none and then the color will set it to inherit what that will do is make sure that all our anchor all our link tags okay which is which are our anchor tag they take the color that the parents has set for them in this case the header is setting white and by saying color inherit our a tag will take that color also also we want to style all of our list tag okay let's take away the um list style set the list style to type to none you know what we can just go with the list style there that will get rid of those bullets or numbering in your list style and let's style our nav don't forget our ul tag is inside our nav okay you can see it right there our ul tag is inside our nav that's what we want to style so let's style our nav tag okay let's give it a width of um let's do 40 percent okay good so a width of 40 percent let's now come down style nav ul okay give it a display of flex what this will do is it will make all the the li tag show side by side which is what we want to do all right a display of flex okay justify content of uh, let's do center oh no let's go with space between align item of center all right and then um should we give that a padding should we give that a padding no i think that's okay for that for now all right let's also style the nav u l l i a let's give that a padding let's give them a little bit of padding so i think 10 ps would do all right good we're almost there so you see on the wider screen now we're almost there okay so the next thing that is left now is on the wide screen like this we don't want to see this menu option and again when we hover over it i don't want i want to change the pointer to, to probably a cursor um, a pointer type of cursor that is what i want there when we hover over it so that's what we want to do so let's go back to our code let's go back to our code and of course bring this back here so what we want to do is where is that menu okay we gave it an id of menu button so let's call that by its id okay to refer to id we use ash so let's give it a cursor set it to pointer you see now we have a cursor of pointer there also for now we don't want to see it on big screen so let's set the display mm, the display yeah let's set the display to none that will get rid of it you see we can't see it any longer which is what we actually want also our logo that size is kind of too small for our logo so let's just bump that size up a bit so we have an id of logo let's give it a font size let's go with a 20 px there okay and um if you look at this design we have this main area with this grayish background with that gray background we don't have that yet so let's just do main tag okay nothing is going to be in there if you are going to be using this for a project this is where you want to throw in your remain your main content so what i want to do is call that main area okay um give it a background color of um let's go with a gray and um a width of 100 percent give it a height of 
100 vh so it occupies the whole screen okay that's it so we are almost there the next thing remaining now is um on a small screen you see this is quite okay on a large screen but on a smaller screen okay you see now when we get to a smaller screen look at the way it's overflowing there this is not doing that so what we want to do is when we get to a smaller screen okay we want to make this responsive there so what we want to do now is um to go with re to make do responsive web design we need to call at media okay we want to use media query here so at media when the mass width okay when the mass width is um probably let's go with a 740px okay when it's at 740ps how did i get that number you might ask what you want to do when you're dealing with responsive design is on your browser right click and go to inspect element then click on this to come to responsive mode okay now notice what this will give you is it will give you like um, a sample of how this will look like on different devices so what you want to do is reduce this weight until you get to that place where you are no longer comfortable with how it looks so if you notice this once i'm coming down even at six um 670 px is still kind of okay this is the size up here okay so at 670 ps it's still kind of okay but i think i want to do it at i can let me go with 740 i think that 740 is kind of okay but you might want to go lower but 740 is okay so let's go with 740 so what do we want to do when this screen size is at 740 px well the first thing we want to do is um this menu we hid okay remember we have a menu icon that we hid okay fine we don't want that menu option to that menu there to show on the big screen but on the smaller screen we want it to show and this is where we hid it so let's come back and change this display to block so we can see it okay change that display to block so if we go down now to 740 you see we are seeing that menu option there okay it's already blocked the next thing we want to look like look at majorly is the nav this navigation menu here we don't want to see it here anymore okay we don't want it here anymore so the first thing we want to do is call the nav menu okay let's use a position of absolute okay now if you know how positioning works by default all um elements have a position of um static okay once you change the position of an item or an element from um static to either absolute or fixed okay it basically leaves experience which is what we want now to make this show up a bit let's give it a background color so you can see the let's go with a red and you notice where we have it right now now what we can do with this is by the time we give it a position of absolute we can give it a top so let's do a top of zero and the left of zero and see what happens you notice it goes to the very top okay so what we want to do is we want to move this down a bit okay we don't want it at the very top so to do that let's use the transform property and translate y okay we want to move it up down you know y that's the y axis if you're going with the x axis you're talking about this way we want to move it this way so that is the y axis so we want to move it on the y axis we want to move it like let's go with 50 px you see it comes down so let's get to a position we know is perfect so let's try 90 that's too much 70 all right 70 is okay all right great so the next thing we want to do when we are done with that is that weight is not really what i want so let's set the weight to a hundred percent and um, give it a padding too so let's do a padding of 20 px 0 px okay good and i want to add a little bit of transition to it okay or we can probably do that later we can probably do that later let's take away the transition now that we are done with that now i don't want this menu showing side by side i want them under each order okay i want them stacked on top of each other so to do that if you notice we set the display of our ul to flex and by default when you set a display of flex the items are arranged in a single row we want to change that so what we can do 
is call our nav ul okay and set the flex direction okay to colon this will make them stack on top of each other private perfect so we don't want them at the center you can leave them at the center if that is okay by you okay but in this sample we have them at the left hand side here yeah, okay so we'll just want to do that but you can probably leave it at the center if that is what you feel is okay by you so i'll do align items and go with flex start okay that should move them to the very right okay i think let's move this up to 25 px okay now let's go with 20 and move this to 5 ps that's better so the next thing we want to do now is um let's also style the nav ulli okay we want to give it a little bit of padding up also so let's give it a padding of 5 ps great that's better that makes them a bit um, gives each of them space between themselves um the next thing we want to do now this is actually working perfectly okay but what we want to do now is the kind of effect i want is i want this thing by default not to be shown okay now we know we can do that by just setting the display to none okay but that's not what i want to do what i want to do is by default i want to push this thing kind of to the very top like out of the viewport now this section you can see this body right here that you can see this is our viewport so i want to move this element out of the viewport if you notice up here where we did translate y for our nav we set it to 70. have you noticed what would happen if we use a negative figure see that it moves up great so let's continue moving that up until it gets to the very top you see that perfect it is gone okay and of course what we want now is whenever a user clicks this button right here this menu button okay we want it to slide down back in okay that's the effect we want we want it to slide down back in that is the position should change what i can do is we can give this a class for that so our nav okay we can give it a class for that so let me give it a class of um let's say show okay that's the class i want to give it give it a class of show and if i come down now and call that class of show and change the transform property okay the transform translate property if i set it to 70 notice it comes down right but if this class is gone if you take away this class now you can't see it anymore so that's basically what we want so what we the kind of effect we want now is a way to add this class and take the class away on the click of this button so when the user clicks that button the class goes off when the user clicks the button the class comes back okay that is what we can do and we can actually use javascript to handle that so the first thing i want to do is um come to this nav i also want to give it an id of nav navigation i'm doing this so it will be easier for me to grab this element using javascript so in our javascript code now okay i'm thinking maybe we should just write our javascript here but well we already created the file so let's separate it so in our javascript code now the very first thing we want to do is let's be sure our javascript is working okay so let's just alert something there let's alert here wow it's not working what is wrong oops we've not um made a link to our javascript file so let's come down here make a script tag set the source equals to app.js that's the name of our javascript file great you can see we're getting that a lot here now good so the very first thing we want to do is grab these two very important elements our menu button and the navigation we want to play around with okay so i'll have a variable of const const menu button set that equals to document dot get element by id the id of the element we want to get is menu button if you remember that that is our menu button and i need a i want to make a copy of this line because i want to grab my other elements this time the menu itself okay the navigation menu itself this is what i want to grab okay 
maybe we should have just called this menu instead of navigation so let's change that back to menu you can leave it as navigation okay so here yeah, we're grabbing the menu itself so what we want now is on the click of this button okay we want to get this menu item and be able to take away this class of show and put it back on the click of the button so the we have a perfect way of doing that so let's go ahead and say menu button dot add event listener what we are doing here is adding an event to that menu button the event i want to add is click and then on the click of it i want to run this callback function you can use an arrow function the yeah or the fat arrow whatever you you used to calling it but i just use this normal boring old way of writing our callback function okay so on the click of that button i want to get my menu okay and i want to check the class list okay now this gives us access to all the classes it has now what we cannot now do is dot toggle okay dot toggle i want to toggle a class toggling means putting and taking away more like you switch something on you switch it off so i want to toggle the class of show now that is all i want to do what this will do now is at the click of the button you will notice that item will be taken away at the click of the button sorry that class will be taken away and then at the click of the button the class will be put back in okay so let's see okay you notice that now so it goes it's back it's gone it is back it is gone it is back so that is the effect we want but this is actually kind of boring because it's actually just disappearing and appearing okay we want to give a little bit of animation to that and the best way we can do that is add a little bit of transition okay so let's add a transition of 0 0.5 seconds that's the total time the transition should take should be an ease in they want to add it on the transform property so this doesn't work on every property good see this now you click it's off you click it's back and um, the next thing this background color we gave to it here if you notice here it is black so let's change that background color to black good and that is it we are done and that is our nav responsive navigation menu there now you can go ahead and play with this you can decide to probably slide this from left to right okay instead of from top to bottom um you can even take that as a challenge okay you can take that as a challenge and drop a link to your solution in the comment section um so that is it our responsive navigation menu is ready to go all right if you like this video please do drop um a like and subscribe to this channel because that would encourage me to make more content and i plan on doing that okay but your likes and your subscription would really help me do that more so thank you and see you around